Hi, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the Flowforge platform that we've released today at version 0.1. This is the very first release of the platform we're making, um, making the uh, GitHub repositories public, published to NPM with the installer so people can start playing with what we're working on. And I should stress this is very much just the first release. We've got a plan to do regular releases every four weeks, so um, expect everything you see to evolve really rapidly. And as an open source project, we um, hope people feel compelled to get involved and contribute back and help build a really powerful platform around the Node-RED project. So once you've followed the install instructions on the website, the very first time you run Node-RED and access it in your browser, you're presented with this initial setup. So this lets you create your administrator user. This is going to be the user who has sort of complete control over the platform um, and is able to administer all the users and all the teams and just everything that's on there. Now you can see on this screen the red warning that I haven't got email set up. So uh, some of the features we have, like being able to invite users to join the platform, re rely on a working email configuration. So that's in the documentation for how to enable that in the runtime settings file. Um, but the UI will highlight where there are features that aren't available because email hasn't been set up. Next thing it asks is for you to upload a license. What we're focused on right now is what we're calling the community edition, which is the pure open source Apache 2 soft, uh, code base, um, for which there's you don't need a license to operate at all. So for now, you can skip this step and just carry on with the CE version. Next asks about uh, gathering usage data. Now, for this release, we haven't actually implemented this feature, but we wanted to highlight it as part of the setup wizard because it is a feature we will be adding um, in, the, in the very near future release. And the idea here is we'll gather uh, and very much anonymized usage data about what features of the platform are being used, um, uh, how they're being used, just information to give us better awareness about what features people are liking, what needs improving, what's being ignored, that type of stuff. So it helps us make uh, the best of the platform. And with that, we're done. Um, we can now log in using the user we just created. So when I log in for the first time as that admin user, um, it invites me to create a team. So teams are how we organize who has access to what. The Node-RED instances, or projects, as we call them in the platform, are owned by a team, and all users have to be in a team in order to do anything. So I'm going to create myself a team, and this is now becomes the default view I'll get whenever I log in in the future, um, my team view. So from here, it tells me I haven't got any projects, which are what we, we call Node-RED instances. Um, but we've also got other tabs with, with more things we'll have a look at in a moment. But what you really want to know about is Node-RED. So let's go and create ourselves a new project. So we can create the project. It offers me a list of the teams I'm in, which is only the one at the moment. And then it generates a random name, um, which you can um, pick one of these, or more likely give it a name that's perhaps uh, more related to what you're planning to build uh, in Node-RED. So um, I end up hitting the refresh button a few times to find a, a British bird I like the sound of. So let's go for helpless house martin. So I click create and what the platform is doing in this local install is it is starting up Node-RED on the same machine I'm running on, running on a, a an assigned port. Um, and from here, I get a high level overview of Node-RED where I can see the current status, it's running, the URL where I can access the editor, uh, a summary of activity on the instance, and the tabs along here give me deeper dive views. So the activity log, obviously not a lot's happening at the moment. Logs are the actual runtime logs from Node-RED itself. And settings, well, right now it lets me rename the project it lets me delete the project. Um, this is 
an area we'll see a lot of activity on in the coming releases as we expose more of the Node-RED runtime settings that we are happy for you to be able to customize for, for your instances. So from here, if I go back, um, I can click the link to the editor. It takes me to FlowForge and it lets me sign in. And by clicking the sign in button, it has basically bounced back to the FlowForge platform, checked that I'm logged into FlowForge as me, checked I'm in a team who's allowed to access this Node-RED instance. And here we have Node-RED that um, I'm sure you're familiar with if, if you've played with Node-RED at all. So I can create my flows. I can start building things. Um, if we go back to um, the project view in the FlowForge platform and go to activity, you can start seeing some more activity events are getting recorded. And again, I'll, I'll say this a lot with this release, there's a lot more work to do around um, how we present the activity log, but we are gathering that information in the background. So with that instance created, what else can we do on the platform? If we go back and look at the team, um, I mean, the idea here is very much around creating, helping people collaborate on Node-RED and um, organize development around groups of users. So from here, I can go to the Members tab, um, and I would be able to add additional team members if they were already registered in the platform. If the admin has enabled it, and I'll show you this option in a minute, and if email is configured, I would even be able to um, invite people who are not currently registered to join this FlowForge instance and gain access to the projects. But without email enabled, um, I can't invite external users right now. Um, and yeah, so, it, so I'm in the team view here. Give me a, a better list of my projects. The audit log, like we had for projects, but uh, more at the team level overview of users and projects coming and going. And settings, let me rename the team, um, delete the team, things like that. Okay. Looking at other options that are available, as a regular user at this point, my user settings let me change basic details about myself, gives me an overview of the teams I'm in. It also shows me any invitations. So if someone has invited me to join their team, it would show up here with options to accept or ignore those invites. Um, security options, changing your password, things like that. As an admin, um, I also get the admin settings view, which gives me a fairly bare bones overview of what's going on on the platform. Um, settings, which I'll come back to. User, again, like with the team view, but now this is a view of all users on the platform, um, pending invitations between users and teams. And as an admin, I've got the new user button. So if you don't have team invitations set up, here's where you can come in and actually create additional user accounts um, and choose whether those new users are admins or not. Um, with also this option about, should we create that user a team of their own that they will be joined to? Um, if you don't create them a team, you will need to add them to an existing team before they can do anything. Uh, and we've got an overview of the of the teams on the platform. Although at this stage, we don't have any tools to go with that. It's just a, an overview of, of the teams. In the settings, there are a number of options. You can see um, some variations on how you may want to run the platform. For example, uh, an option. this first option determines whether users can self-register with the platform or do they have to be added by an administrator like I just showed you. And that does require email because they get emailed an invite to, to join the platform. Um, whether we should automatically create personal teams for users when they register, or do you want to restrict it to only the teams that an administrator has created? Should users be allowed to create more teams, I mean, as well as just having a personal team created for them, should users be able to create multiple teams? And that very much depends on your organization and how you want to arrange the projects and the access control to those projects. And the option I've talked about inviting external users to Teams or should you only, should users only be able to invite existing users to, to Teams. So a number of different options there to support 
different scenarios about how you want to organize the access control of the platform. Um, but again, it is still super early. This is version 0.1. Um, there's a lot more work to do around um, user management, um, integrating single sign-on, those sorts of things. Um, and then there's the option around the telemetry here so that admins do have the power to opt in and out to that at any time. There's the license view, which, as I said, at the moment, Flowforge Community Edition requires absolutely no license. It's f absolutely free to run. Um, but in the future, there'll be uh, the Enterprise Edition, which will come with a license that users will be able to provide here to unlock those features. And an overview of the email configuration, but um, you, will only, you can only modify the email configuration in the runtime configuration file. Uh, and finally, we do have a link to the documentation for the project, which currently hosted in the GitHub repository. Um, and uh, you know, there's that's that'll be an ever-growing repository worth of information about how to use the platform and as we add new features and how to make the most of them. So that's a super quick tour of the Flowforge platform at the 0.1 release. This is very much the initial release of the platform. Um, there's plenty more still to do. And we will have a regular cadence of releases every month that will add more features, more interesting integrations with Node-RED, expose more Node-RED features to be able to manage in the platform. So uh, if you like what you see, do give it a go. Um, we'd love to get your feedback. We'd love to hear from the community. We think this is going to be a really useful way to help manage Node-RED at scale, um, it be able to manage teams of users working with Node-RED. But you know, this is very much just the beginning and um, we're excited about what we've got to come. Thank you.